Hey guys, it's Adam Levitan here at Fantasy Labs. So we are in the heart of baseball slash PGA season. And these are sports that I don't feel as confident in, I don't feel as comfortable with, I don't follow as closely as, say, NBA or NFL. So I've kind of taken a more GPP approach when playing these sports. And it's actually kind of relaxing, you know, when you play... Uh, mostly cash games for NFL and NBA, you have to risk a lot of money to win a significant amount of money. Whereas in GPPs, obviously we can risk a very little bit for a potentially big payoff. And the other thing about playing GPPs is we can run uh, multiple lineups, whereas, uh, you know, a lot of lineups, 20, 50, whatever we want. Um, Whereas in cash, I really thought it was important for me to stick to one Or two lineups, and and that was because I was really confident in what I thought was right for cash on a given slate. Um, You know, just really confident in in what I thought the right play was for that night uh, from a floor ceiling perspective. But it's just a totally new animal for me to be playing uh, GPPs and putting a lot of lineups in. So I talked a little bit about this last week using the the lineup generator and the stacking tool and kind of choosing stacks. You can see uh, the video on that if you scroll back through the archives. Today I'm going to be talking about using the filters in the multi lineup generator. So let's go to MLB and it's Tuesday morning. It is uh, pretty early on Tuesday morning. I am going to go to my player models. I'm the tournament model today. I am on DraftKings and I am going to go to lineups and I'm going to go to generate multiple lineups. Now, assuming you've been to this page before, obviously select the number of lineups that you want. Uh, let's do 20 for today. A min salary cap. I like to start with it around 97 or so. And if I need to bring it down, I can. Always avoid the opposing pitcher. Okay, so today, last video I talked about stacking. We're going to eliminate that today. And that's actually something I wanted to touch on quickly is, I mean, stacking has become so, so, so prevalent in GPPs. I'd be curious to know what percentage of the field isn't doing some kind of stacking in GPPs. And it makes sense. You know, obviously it's so, so heavily correlated together. We talk about an NFL always using a quarterback and a pass catcher combo uh, together in GPPs just to give you that huge ceiling. And it makes sense in baseball, perhaps even more so. Obviously you get a guy on base. Uh, another guy gets a hit, you get the RBI, you get the run, you get the hit, you get everything that goes with it. Um, makes a lot of sense. But when everybody is doing one thing, I think there can always be some kind of argument made to, to be doing the other thing. So if everybody is stacking or if 90% of the field is stacking and if on DraftKings they're doing full, you know, five, six person stacks um, every night. Well, perhaps we should be looking the other way. So that's been something I've been I've been tinkering with and and using the player filters here when mil- when building multiple lineups um, can help with that a lot. So if you can add these filters here, all of them uh, various for hitter and pitcher, lineup order, my trends, um, precipitation percentage if you're worried about the weather, pro trends, strikeouts per nine for pitchers, woba split, all this. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to test which of these are important and which ones I want to filter out. So let's obviously, anytime I want to um, make a statement, I want to test it. You know, I don't want to just say, hey, uh, Woba split is really important for hitters. Everybody knows that. Well, you know what? Let's test it and make sure. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to say test. I am on hitters on DraftKings. And... First, let's test lineup order. So where a player bats in the order. How important is that? So the baseline, anywhere 1 through 9, negative 0.001. Let's say they bat it first, 0.57. That's pretty good. Let's say they bat second, 0.46, a little bit worse. Third, 0.18, way worse. Fourth. 0.18, same as as 3rd in the order. 5th goes all the way down to 0.02. And once we get to the 6th spot, we start to get very, very negative. 
So, you know, people like to throw out all oh, the top of the order is so important. You know, here's proof. Okay, guys, once we get to six, it's really, really, really bad. Ideally, guys would be either first or second, plus point point five one, And this is a huge sample. And in baseball, you know, your plus minuses aren't going to be like they are in basketball. It's very, very small. 0. 0.51 is significant. So 20,000 sample for guys batting either first or second. First, second, or third, 0. 0.40, really solid. First, second, third, or cleanup, 0. 0.34. And then we start to go down a little bit to 0.28 at 5. 0.19 here for 1 through 6. So ideally, we'd like guys in the 1 to 4 range. We can handle 1 to 5 if we need it. But yeah, definitely emphasis on the top of the order, first and second. Okay, so we tested that. Cool. Let's now test. Why don't we test pro trends? So how many pro trends a guy has? Does that really matter? So anywhere from 1 to 17, that's the baseline. Uh, about an even even range. So if they have exactly 1, not good. If they have exactly 2, not good. And I'm not going to bore you guys with this whole thing. I've obviously uh, done it already. I learned that when somebody gets to about 6, that's when the pro trends start to matter. So pretty big count here, 56, 24 plus minus of plus 0.73, very significant. So at least six trends. And if we bring that six all the way up to 17, 0.58. So at least six trends, I think is something that, that is important and shows a positive expectation. And then for uh, our last filter that I think is important, I'm gonna go to Woba split. Players Woba versus the handedness of the pitcher that he's facing that day. So, you know, 0.2 obviously isn't very good. That's about a positive expectation. That's about a neutral expectation. 0.3, we show a, a plus 0 0.09. Start to go up here, 0.31. Watch the numbers go up. Watch the numbers go up here. 0 0.32, 0 0.33, we're on our way up. 0 0.34, we're going up higher. 0 0.35, we're going up higher. 0 0.36, keep going up. Starting to flatten out a little bit there. So ideally, I'll say... 0.35 but we can handle a little bit below there we just know that as a person's as a player's woba split rises their plus minus also rises so now we have some things that we want to think about for our filters so i'm going to go back to my player models let me go back to my lineups i'm gonna go back to generate multiple lineups and as i said i'm gonna build 20 like to keep this at 97 i always avoid the opposing pitcher now note the filters as it says here filters do not apply to stacks so we're not talking about stacks here. We're just going to add the filters that we wanted. So lineup order. We said one to four is ideal. Woba split. We said 0.35, at least 0.35 is ideal. Pro trends. We said at least six makes a big difference. All right, now before I even hit generate lineups here, note that only 38 players out of the 385 in today's model match. So we're going to have a hard time making lineups with this. I can tell already. So uh, if we hit generate lineups, it thinks for a while it says we cannot build a lineup around your parameters. We need more players here. So one of the things that I noticed uh, when we were doing the trends was lineup order up to five is okay. And Woba split. Maybe if we go down to... 0.32. Let's see if this is enough players. 47 to make 20 lineups. It's thinking. We're hoping. We're hoping it's giving us the nuts. We are hoping that it can make lineups. And it's looking that it cannot. No, it's still thinking. All right, so some, I'm willing to come down here if I don't if I think that um, oh we did make the lineups, but I was gonna say if it if it can't make the lineups, I'm willing to come down off my salary cap, and I think leaving money on the table is something that I rarely rarely do. Leaving significant money, like more than 500 DK dollars on the table, is something I would rarely rarely do in NFL, and almost never do in NBA, just because every dollar is so important. But in baseball, I, you know, every dollar. Um, is not worth as much 
um, players' outcomes are far less predictable. Opportunity, as I talked about in the last one, in the last video, is the same for all the players. So whereas in NFL and NBA, we're often paying for opportunity, even if we pay less for a guy, if he's in the top five of the order, he's likely to get just as many chances as somebody that's more expensive. So here are my 20 lineups. Um, this was 97%, and this gave us 20 lineups with our filters. All these guys are in the top five of their order. They have at least a 320 WOBA split, and they all have at least six pro trends. So I would venture to say these are all really um, solid lineups tonight for tournaments. And I know there's no stacking here. I, I understand that um, you know stacking is ideal and optimal for GPPs. This is a way to swerve off of that. Now, also, if we wanted to play uh, cash, we could just take top two lineups here. And maybe we could be more specific with our trends. Let's say we only want two. We want to run two lineups. We want cash tonight. And we want these to be our um, filters. So I'll clear this out again. And let's say we want to see if we can make it work like this with only top four guys in the lineup. For two nope can't do it so we'll stick with five here let's see if we can go to 0.33 here on the woba okay and these are two so um, I'm not sure about Nate cards and cash but you get the point that you can make uh, more optimal lineups quickly and, and I think that's really important you know I think one of the important things about fantasy labs is some people uh, have all day to make lineups and think about stuff uh, using these filters. We can immediately tell who the good plays are. Pro trends, really positive expectation. Woba split, positive expectation. Top of the lineup, really important. So we can figure out who the good plays are, and I'm confident that all these guys are solid plays for tonight based on these filters. All right, that's going to do it for today. Just a quick one. If you guys ever have any other ideas for these videos or any questions, don't hesitate to email me, ajl201 at yahoo.com. So for Jerry, I am Adam. Good luck.